Good evening. Vitayamo, welcome to Christ Church Cathedral. My name is the Reverend Canon Janine Friesen, and I'm the priest in charge here at the cathedral. And it's my honor to welcome you here to this uh, Holodomar commemoration on behalf of our cathedral community. It's important that we remember the horrors of the Holodomor so that the memory of those who died will live on. And we are humbled to be a part of this commemoration. It has been an honor to meet Father Yuri and other members of the Ukrainian community as we've prepared for this event. And Yuri, I hope that this will be the, just another step in an, in an ongoing, growing relationship between our two communities. Here at Christ Church Cathedral, we live, work, play, and worship on the ancestral lands of the Lekwungen-speaking people, the Esquimalt, and the Songhees First Nations. We are committed to an ongoing, the ongoing work of reconciliation that is necessary to build a relationship based on compassion, respect, and justice with the First Nations. I would please ask at this point that you would turn off your cell phones as we continue our commemoration. Dobry wieczór. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Сьогодні ми шануємо пам'ять 90 річниць Голодомору. Пам'ятаємо і не забуваємо. Today we commemorate the 90th anniversary of the Holodomor genocide perpetrated by Russia under President Stalin in 1932 and 33. We remember, and may we never forget. Good afternoon and welcome to the Holodomor commemoration, which is both a requiem for the millions of Ukrainians killed by Russia in the 1930s, a requiem for the thousands killed by Russian aggression this year, and a plea for peace in the world. My name is Peter Scales, my grandfather emigrated in 1928 from Western Ukraine to Saskatchewan and married my grandmother, who was born to, in Canada to parents who had come from Ukraine in 1902. I will share the Master of Ceremonies duties with Dima. I will ask Dima to introduce himself, and then we will ask you to stand for the singing of the national anthems of Canada and the Ukraine. Доброго вечора. Мене звуть Дмитро Борисенко, і ми всією сім'єю приїхали до Манітоби трішки більше, ніж три роки тому. Але цим літом ми приїхали до Вікторії. Саме думаю тому, моя українська трішки краща, ніж англійська. Ласкаво просимо на вшанування Голодомору, яке є одночасно реквієм по мільйонах українців, убитих Росією в 90... 1930-х роках, Реквієм по тисячах загиблих в результаті російської агресії в цьому році і закликом до миру у всьому світі. Ми просимо вас встати під час виконання національних гімнів Канаді та України.
A candle lit can signify so much. Hope, memory, life, warmth. In our Holodomor commemoration, lit candles represent the memory of the Ukrainian people who were killed in the genocide in the 1930s. And the candles that light so many homes today in Ukraine because the Russian aggressors have damaged the civil power infrastructure. Wheat and bread are central to life in Ukraine. The flag colors of Ukraine represent blue skies over golden wheat fields. During the 1930s Holodomor, Russia weaponized food. They stole the wheat from the people of Ukraine and killed millions. In the current war in Ukraine, food is again being used as a weapon. I invite the children to come forward to light candles and place sheafs of wheat. Запалена свічка може означати так багато. Це надія, пам'ять, життя, тепло. На задку про голодомор запалені свічки символізують пам'ять про українців, яких було вбито під час геноциду в 1930-х роках. Чи свічки також сьогодні освітлюють будинки в Україні, тому що російські агресори знищують цивільну інфраструктуру. Пшениця і хліб займають центральне місце в житті України. Кольори прапора України символізують блакитне небо над золотими пшеничними полями. Під час Володомору Росія перетворила продовольство на зброю. Вони вкрали пшеницю у народу, і вони вбили українців і мільйони українців. У нинішній війні в Україні продовольство знову використовується як зброя. Я запрошую дітей вийти вперед, запалити свічки і покласти колоски пшениці.
Добрий вечір. Вітаю всіх у цьому, у цьому храмі. First of all, I want to I thank Reverend Canon Janine Friesen for welcoming us and also to the entire Church, Christ Church Cathedral community for welcoming us in this beautiful temple. And I also want to thank all of you for coming here today to remember all those who perished as victims of the Holodomor. Now we're going to celebrate Panacheda, a memorial service for the deceased, which is celebrated fairly frequently among Eastern churches, both Orthodox and Eastern Catholic churches. Today, we pray for the repose of the souls of millions of Ukrainians who are transferred by our merciful Lord from the darkness of the Valley of Sorrow and weeping to the land of the living, to a place of light, a place of green pasture, a place of tranquility, from which pain, sorrow, and mourning have fled. When singing eternal memory, Vishnaya Pamet, at the end of the service, to these faithful, we remember their tragic end and witness to all our human family that we must never forget such evil starvation. But on the contrary, we must condemn the Holodomor so that such atrocities would not be repeated in the history of humanity. Let us please rise. Благословений Бог наш завжди нині повсякчас і на віки вічні. О Твоє царство і сила і слава Отця і Сина і Святого Духа 
ныне по всех час и на веки вечные. Милуй нас, Боже, з великої милості Твоєї, молимось Тебе, вислухай і помилуй. Покій душ померлих, слуг Божих, жертв голодному ройноциду в Україні, і щоб проститися їм всякому прорішенню, добровільному і недобровільному. Господь Бог оселив душі їх, де праведні спочивають. Милости Божої Царства Небесного і відпущення гріхів їх, у Христа безсмертного царя і Бога нашого просім. Господеві помолімся. Боже Духів і всякої плоті, Ти смерть подолав і диявола знищив, і життя світ Твої Твоєму дарував. Сам Господи, у покой душі померлих слуг Твоїх, жертв голодомору геноциду в Україні, на місці світлому, на місці квітучому, на місці спокійному, звідки відійшов біль, печаль і зітхання. І всяке прогрішення, вчинене ними словом, чи ділом, чи думкою, як благий і чоловіку любить Бог, прости. Бо немає людини, що жила і не зрішила. Ти бо єдиний без гріха, правда Твоя, правда навіки, і Слово Твоє істина. Бо Ти є воскресіння і життя, і опокій померлих слуг Твоїх, жертв голодом уройноцидів в Україні, Христе Боже наш, і Тобі славу віддаємо з беззначальним Твоїм Отцем, і Пресвятим, і Благим, і Животворним Твоїм Духом, нині повсякчас і на віки вічені. Аминь. 
Premudri. Слава Тобі, Христе Боже, надія наша, слава Тобі! Христос, істинний Бог наш, що живими і мертвими володіє, молитвами причистої своєї матері, святих славників, психвальних апостолів, преподобних і богоносних отців наших, і всіх святих, і душі слуг Твоїх, що переставилися від нас, жертв Голодомору на цю Україні, в оселях праведних оселей, на лоні Авраама у покої, і до праведних залічить, і нас помилує, як благий і чоловіколюбе. Господи, поміни душі усіх безвинно загиблих від голодомору та інших репресій закатованих та вбитих братів і сестер наших. Подаруй вічний спокій в Твоїх світлих оселях тим, хто пройшов через страшні душевні муки, спостерігаючи за стражданнями власних дітей. Упокой, Боже, всіх жертв голодомору і репресій в оселях праведних. Прийми, Боже, як мучеництво їхній біль і сльози. Святими молитвами загиблих та пам'яттю про них очисти, Господи, нас сьогодні від усякої байдужості і жорстокосердя, ненависті і нетерпимості. І нехай, Боже, милістю Твоєю подібна біда ніколи не повториться знову. Амінь. У блаженому спині Вічний упокій подай, Господи, повсякчас поминаним слугам Твоїм, жертвам молодому реноциду в Україні, і вчини їм вічною
And now I would like to invite Reverend Benon Janine to say a prayer for the victims of Holodomor. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord God, our reposed brothers and sisters who, with faith and hope in eternal life, perished in the Holodomor, the great famine, whose names are known to you, O Lord. As our merciful God and lover of humankind, remit, pardon, and forgive all their sins, both voluntary and involuntary, and grant them your eternal good things which you have prepared for those who love you. Be merciful unto them and accept their faith instead of their works and grant them rest, O compassionate one, with the saints. For there is no one who has lived without sinning. You only are without any sin and your righteousness is eternal. For you are a God of mercy and compassion and love all humankind, and we offer glory unto you. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Luna is the Ukrainian word for echo. The Luna ensemble will sing Rozhbinka, a solemn prayer for a thief who was crucified in Jerusalem during a bitter occupation by enemy soldiers. That thief asked Jesus, who was also being crucified by the colonizers, to remember him in heaven. And Jesus said, yes, you will be with me in paradise. Луна – це українське слово, що означає «відлуння». Ансамблі Луна заспіває пісню «Розбійнику» – урочисту молитву за злодія, розп'ятого в Єрусалимі під час жорстокої окупації римськими солдатами. Цей злодій попросив у Ісуса, якого теж розп'яли колонізатори, згадати його на небесах. І Ісус сказав – «Так, ти теж будеш зі мною в раю». Grace Lohr was elected the MLA for Victoria Beacon Hill in 2020. Grace has been a dedicated anti-violence advocate, academic instructor and researcher, and community housing organizer. Prior to her election, she taught political science at the University of Victoria and at the University of British Columbia. Grace has worked closely with the Victoria Sexual Assault Center and other anti-violence organizations to create inclusive, accessible, and survivor-centered sexual assault response.
I'm the MLA for uh, Victoria Beacon Hill. I'm incredibly uh, grateful for the invitation from the Ukrainian Canadian Congress to join you this evening. On behalf of myself, my colleagues across the South Island, and Premier David Eby, we are with you today. We are with Ukrainian communities across the province and the world in remembering the victims of the Hol Holomador and honoring the strength of survivors. The ongoing violence from Russia in Ukraine, I know, has had a profound impact on the Ukrainian community here in Victoria, across the province, and around the world. Now, more than ever, perhaps, gatherings like this are so important to have the opportunity to be together, to remember, to collectively support those impacted, their families, those who are grappling with the loss and trauma of, that has occurred historically, but is ongoing to this day. I do not have Ukrainian roots, but my children do, and I'm, I'm very grateful to be here with you today for them, for you, and for all communities. I want to also say that, uh, especially when we're talking about violence perpetrated by a state that leads to loss, the kind of loss that we're commemorating today, but also the loss that is ongoing, it is all the more important for those of us who are in government, who represent government, to be here with you to mark it and to remember. As someone in politics, the most important tool that I have is my voice, though I started to lose it four weeks ago and it's just coming back. I'm uh, forever um, standing up, willing to stand up with you with people across our communities to denounce hatred and violence in all the forms that it takes and to collectively use our voice, as was mentioned, for peace, for compassion. I want to extend an ongoing invitation as your MLA to hear from you, to have you share with me and our government how we can continue to support our local Ukrainian community. I'm grateful again to be here with you today for the opportunity to listen with my ears and my heart. And again, on behalf of myself, Premier David Eby and my colleagues across the South Island, we stand with you, we stand with Ukrainians across BC and across the world as we can continue to work for and commit to a better province and a better world for everyone. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge a number of local politicians who are here with us tonight, supporting the Ukrainian community. Mena Westhaver, representing Saanich Mayor and Council. A representative for Randall Garrison, Member of Parliament for Esquimalt, Saanich and Souk. Also, the Mayor of Victoria sent this statement. I send my sincerest regrets to the Ukrainian Canadian Congress for being unable to attend this year's annual international commemoration of the whole Damor. My thoughts are with all those in our community who are commemorating this solemn occasion and with the courageous people of Ukraine. I am proud to stand with Victoria's Ukrainian community during this particularly difficult time, and I add my voice to those calling for peace, safety, and security in Ukraine and around the world. Sincerely, Marianne Alto, Victoria Mayor. Is Mena here? Mena Westhaver is Saanich Councillor representing the Mayor and Council from the District of Saanich. Thank you for having me here today and I'm honoured to be here and to share in this and really to have an opportunity to learn deeper about this event. And although 90 years ago feels like it's very present right now with how our world is being. On behalf of Mayor and Council of the District of Saanich, we are committed to enveloping a world that is no hatred, safe, full of peace and love.
so we can all venture through our days feeling secure in our own communities. So on behalf of my council and Mayor of Saanich, we will continue to support those in our community and we want everybody to know that we feel the pain. We cannot imagine the, the level of pain that was felt on that tragic time during the Holodomor and I, I must apologize if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but we, we, we recognize that that was a painful experience and not only then, that continues today from those that were affected directly and indirectly. And we gather and support the Ukrainian community, both locally, provincially, federally, around the world. And we will continue to do that in our community of Saanich. Thank you for having me and sharing in this. Two thousand years ago, the radical Jewish preacher Jesus told his followers about the character of the people of the kingdom of heaven, expressed as blessings or beatitudes. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus presented a new set of ideals to focus on love and humility rather than force and exaction. The Luna Ensemble will sing the Beatitudes. Dr. Tamara Krochenko, I know she's here, is an assistant professor in public administration at UVic and is Ukrainian Canadian. Her sister is Ukrainian and a refugee in Germany today. Tamara's father, Bogdan Krochenko, was one of the first researchers to use archival evidence to document the Holodomor. Tamara. Thank you. My remarks today will be about the extent of the Holodomor, the genocide. And I'll briefly outline a few historical facts drawing on the works of Anne Applebaum, um, my father, and our own Sergei Yekelchuk, who regrets he couldn't be here today. As we know, the Holodomor was a man-made famine from 1932 to 33 and was part of the broader Soviet famine that caused mass starvation across the grain-growing regions of Soviet Russia and Kazakhstan. But the Ukrainian famine was different. It was most deadly by purpose intentions of Soviet design. 
When Stalin decided to collectivize agriculture in 1929, peasants were forced to give up their land, and the so-called kulaks, the wealthier peasants, were deported alongside any resistors. And this is the history of my own family. My grandfather stolen away from his village and dumped in a frozen forest near Volograd um, in the middle of winter, basically. The result of this collectivization, of course, was predictable. A drop in production, the disorganization of the rural economy, food shortages, and what happened? It sparked peasant rebellions in some parts of Ukraine. And so the Soviet Politburo decided to widen and deepen the famine. Imagine that. To use hunger and death as a weapon. Farms, villages, and entire towns in Ukraine were placed on blacklists and present, prevented from receiving food. Prevented even little children to starve them to death, to look them in the eyes and make this a choice. The evil of these intentions. Peasants were forbidden to leave the Ukrainian Republic in search of food. Homes were ransacked of food and farms of crops, and they took everything. And it's for this reason, when we saw in this growing season that Russian forces were purposefully targeting farmers, agricultural equipment, and farms that sustain and feed, that that hurt so much. By spring 1933, death rates in Ukraine spiked, and the famine was accompanied by a broader assault on Ukrainian identity. A campaign of repression and persecution was carried out against Ukrainians. Culture and religious leaders, they were jailed, sent to the gulag, or executed, and it's estimated by some historians that around 80% of Ukrainian leadership was murdered in this way. And at the same time, Soviet bureaucrats, they hid the famine. Stalin himself went so far as to repress the results of the 1937 census and its administrators were murdered. So then we ask how many died. Journalist Harry Lang visited Ukraine in 1933 and was told by high-ranking state official that six million people perished from the famine in Ukraine. If you look at the 1926 census and compare it against the 1939 census, what you'll find is that over this 13-year period, the number of Ukrainians diminished by 11%. But we'll never know the exact number attributable to the famine. We won't. But when you add the casualties of the civil war, the collectivization, the famine, the purges of the 1930s, and the 6.8 million Ukrainians who died during World War II, when you combine that all, it's estimated that more than half of the male population and a quarter of the female population of Ukraine died. And such a mountain of skulls is unprecedented in human history. The Ukrainian poet Ivan Drach was the first to publicly speak about the famine in 1986 after Chernobyl disaster, citing it as an example of how damaging official silence can be. And we will never be silenced again. The pain of speaking to you today while Russia commits another genocide is immense. And I know many of your relatives survived the Holodomor famine, and many of you today are refugees from your homes, family being again brutally brutalized by Russian colonialism, and let this be the last generation. Let's end this. Canada recognized the Holodomor as a genocide in 2008. And in 2019, British Columbia recognized it as well. We adopted legislation here. And this committed this as a day to remember it as a genocide, but also to teach this in our schools. And never will they be able to hide this again. We will remember, we won't forget, normally, you know, you end a speech like this saying never again, and yet here we are again. The shame of that. But let this be the last generation. Thank you.
I'll now, now ask my friend Dima Borisenko to speak in Ukrainian about Holodomor. Доброго вечора. Я намагаюся намагаюся бути коротшим. Але з вересня 1993 року, тільки з вересня 1993 року Україна почала говорити про визнання Голодомору. І лише у 2006 році, відповідно до закону про Голодомор 32-33 років в Україні ухвалено те, що голод 32-33 років є актом геноциду українського народу. А його публічне заперечення визнання, визнається над, на ругою над пам'яттю мільйонів жертв Голодомору, приниженням гідності українського народу і є протиправним. Верховна Рада 16 листопада 2022 року ухвалила звернення до парламентів держав світу про визнання Голодомору 32-33 років геноцидом українського народу. На сьогодні Голодомор в Україні офіційно визнали геноцидом українського народу 22 держави. Але про що нам можуть розповісти ці події? Що вражає, так те, що як одна з найтрагічніших подій в історії українського народу в 300-річній боротьбі за свою незалежність відображає непереборне прагнення всієї нації до свободи. Цей геноцид також виник як акт нездатності більшовицького режиму побороти волю і спрагу жити вільними на своїй землі. Воля до свободи навіть ціною свого життя. І зараз, через 90 років після трагедії, Росія продовжує чинити геноцид проти українців, одночасно влаштовуючи голодомор Українах Африки шляхом блокади експорту українського зерна. Але ці спроби вже агонія. Ці спроби – це ще один доказ нездатності ворога допогатися своїх цілей. Тому що свободу українського народу не заборонити і не закрити. І свобода – в генетичному коді нашої нації. Пам'ятаємо про це. Дякую. Juravli, Cranes. Two brothers wrote this song in 1910 as a requiem for fallen Ukrainian freedom fighters. Imagine cranes flying on their long migration, their wings tattered and all traces of them vanishing in the mist.
Irina Starostina is a granddaughter of Holodomor survivors. She will now speak a testimonial in Ukrainian, followed by an English translation. Добрий вечір, дорогі друзі. Страшні історії про штучний голод в Україні я чула з ранньої своєї молодості від своєї від моєї бабусі. Мої бабця і дід Марія і Василь Чосенки пережили голодомори 33 і 1947 років. Вони жили в центральній Україні в селі Орловець на Черкащині. Бабуся часто згадувала і багато говорила про ті страшні часи нам, онукам. Вона говорила, як совіти забрали всю їжу з двору, а потім ще приходили і шукали. Може, хто що сховав. Такими довгими залізними щупами штрикали в сінники, в стріхи сараїв, в землю, якщо їм то здавалося підозрілим. І якщо щось знаходили, то забирали все. А люди залишалися ні з чим, і насувалася зима. Ну і таких історій від бабусі я чула дуже багато. Про те, як діти пухли з голоду. Про те, як просили хліба, його не було. Як вимирали в страшних муках від голоду цілими родинами. Я знаю, де в нашому селі стояла хата Людожера, який від голоду збожеволів і почав їсти людей. Це селянин наш, ну, з нашого села. Бабуся іноді плакала, коли то розповідала, а дід на неї сердився, що вона то згадує. Але сьогодні я хочу вам розповісти історію страшну, але дійсно дивовижну, історію порятунку моєї сім'ї, як вони врятувалися в ті пекельні часи. Їх врятувала картопля. За рік до Голодомору дуже вродила картопля, її було дуже багато. І її зберігали в такій спеціальній великій ямі. Але коли прийшла зима, то настали сильні морози, і ту картоплю не вберегли. Вона померзла і стала непридатною до їжі. Ну, її просто засипали землею і забули про той прикрий випадок. Та коли через рік настав голод, абсолютно не було чого їсти, вони згадали про ту картоплю і вирішили подивитися, може там щось залишилось від неї. І коли її відкопали, то побачили, що картопля не згнила, а так ніби всохла. І в кожній картоплинці вона була зморщена і висохша, але всередині кожної картоплини була ложечка крохмалю. І то було диво, ну і то був порятунок, бо вони той крохмаль варили з водою і їли. І так харчувалися цілу зиму. І картоплі було багато, вони ще й з родичами ділилися. А потім весною... Вже почала перша зелень з'являтися, кропива і щавель в лісі. І вони в те вариво додавали ту зелень, трошки те їли. І так вони врятувалися, так вони вижили. Мої бабуся і дід. От. І потім бабуся моя скільки жила, а прожила вона 86 років на землі. Вона не їла зеленого борщу, який так люблять всі українці. Вона казала, я того щавлю в голодовку наїлася. Ось така сумна, страшна і дивовижна історія. Дякую за увагу. And now English translation by Lester Kuzik. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Irina, for sharing that incredibly heartfelt and difficult story. Now, I'll translate it. When I was a child, my grandmother told me bone-chilling stories about the enforced famine in Ukraine. My grandparents, Maria and Vasil Chosenko, survived two engineered famines, one in 1932-33 and the other in 1947. They lived in central Ukraine in the Cherkasa region in a village called Orlovets. My babusia, or grandmother, often shared her stories with me and the other grandchildren about those terrible times when the Soviets collected all the food from people's homes and then inspected around the homes to see if they could discover any hidden food. They came with long iron rods to probe inside the straw-thatched roofs 
They probed hay bales, and they probed the soil around the house to see if there was any food left. They took all the food they could find, everything, and people were left with no food. Winter was coming. I heard many stories from that time about children starving. They asked for a sliver of bread, but there was none, and their little bellies were swollen. About how whole households perished in agony from starvation. And I know of a house in our village that belonged to a cannibal. He became insane from the hunger, and he ate other people. My grandmother often cried when she shared her memories about those times, and my grandfather scorned her for remembering them. But today, I want to share a miraculous story of how my grandparents survived that hell. Potatoes saved their lives. A year before the famine, they had a great potato harvest, such a large bounty, and they kept it especially covered in a big hole in the ground. However, that winter was very, was harsh, and extreme frosts froze their bounty, and the potatoes could not be used for food. So my grandparents covered the potatoes with more soil, and they forgot about them. When the famine came a year later in 1933, they remembered the rotten potatoes buried in the ground. They uncovered them, desperately hoping to find pieces that could still be used for food. What they discovered was that the potatoes had not rotted, but instead they, had, they dried out. And most importantly, each potato still had a bit of starch preserved inside it. And this is what saved them. My grandparents boiled the potatoes in water and drank that water to sustain themselves, and they shared it with their family. This kept them alive through that winter. And when spring came to that potato water, they added fresh, freshly sprouted wild sorrel and wild nettle that they collected in the woods. This is, how, this is how they survived and escaped starvation and got a little nourishment. This is how they escaped death. And for the rest of my babusia's life, her long life, she lived to be 86 years old. She could not eat borscht, green borscht, we call it, with wild sorrel, which is a favorite dish of many Ukrainians. She always said, I ate enough of that sorrel during the famine. Thank you very much. The song Svicha, which means candle, by composer Miroslav Skorik, memorializes the tragedy of the Holodomor in Ukraine. Today, internationally, on the fourth Saturday of November, we honor the memories of the victims of the famine. A moment of silence is observed and a lighted candle is placed on the windowsill. Pisna Svicha, za melodiju Miroslava Skorika, presvjačena tragediju Holodomora v Ukrajini, 1932-33 roki. Tradicijno, u četvrtu sobotu listopada, v den pamjeti žrtv Holodomorjev, šanovajc hvilino je movčanje ta vstanovljujo zapalenu svičku na pedvikonje.
Dima and I have a few closing remarks. Thank you to Christchurch Cathedral and Canon Friesen for hosting this event, to our invited speakers, to all the singers and musicians, to all who support Ukraine and the Ukrainian people and peace. I ask you to consider these actions. Share the stories you've heard today. Share them widely. Second, email or write to politicians to support Ukraine, to support Ukrainians who have come to Canada as refugees, and to work for peace. And third, I ask you to donate to the Canada-Ukraine Foundation. There are boxes at the back. A member organization of the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress, they have been providing humanitarian aid in Ukraine since 1995. Ukrainian people need our support today. Tax receipts are available for donations over $25. Donation boxes are at the cathedral doors and they can accept cards as well. Дякуємо собору Христа Спасителя, за організацію цього заходу. Дякую всім нашим доповідачам і всім всім, хто підтримує Україну, український народ та світ проти насильства і війни. Я прошу вас зробити три прості речі. Перше, публікуйте та поширюйте цю історію. Друге, надішліть електронного листа або просто листа з проханням політикам, які мають волю, щоб підтримати Україну та підтримати простих українців, які приїхали зараз до Канади. І будемо вам також дуже вдячні за пожертву в Канадсько-Український фонд. Зараз ми завершуємо нашу зустріч Молитвою за Україну, прошу всіх встати. I ended with Ukrainian. Yeah, please stand up for Molitva za Ukrainu and pray for Ukraine. Thank you for attending this commemoration of Holodomor. Drive safely and take care of each other.